Hey guys, it's Jen. Welcome to my master closet. Now this is a video that uh, a lot of you have asked me about. I have kind of hesitated because I don't really think of myself as a storage and organizational guru. Um, there are so many great YouTubers that have done so many great videos about your master closet, cleaning out my master closet. But um, actually I had my designer over here as we were talking about the master bathroom remodel and she said, you really need to do this video because this closet is gorgeous and people are gonna wanna know how you do it, how you keep it this way, what are your systems? And so I'm gonna try to keep this really simple today. I did not really tidy this space up at all before I came in here to film this. So I promise you from the bottom of my heart, which you guys know authenticity is really important to me, this is how I live in this closet. So. Um, yeah, I'm just really glad that you're here. And if you're not already subscribed, I wish you would. Go ahead and hit that big subscribe button and make sure you give this video a big thumbs up if you'd like more of this kind of content from me. So this closet is the largest we have ever had. We have lived in houses with teeny tiny closets and uh, that's all. We've only ever lived... <laughs> lived in houses with teeny tiny closets. So when we first looked at this house, I was like, oh my gosh, that space is mind blowing to me. I'm not even gonna show you Scott's side of the closet because I refuse to pick up after a, an over 50 year old man. So his side of the closet is a disaster. I'm not taking you over there. I, I don't, it's just a complete mess. I am thinking of doing a whole video on what to do when you're married to a slob because I am married to a slob and it is, I've learned a few things along the way about what to do and what not to do and cleaning up after him is something I'm just not gonna do. So that's his side. This is my side. Um, this was all designed by my friend Nancy um, at the Container Store. With my help, I was a closet designer when I worked for them. So she and I sort of worked together on this space and I absolutely love it. I'm going to insert here just kind of a tour so that you can see all of the space, how I utilize it, and then I'm gonna come back here and we're gonna talk really practical tips about what you can do to get something like this if you want this in your own master closet. All right, you guys, here is my master closet space. Tons of drawers and organization. I'm gonna talk more specifically about all of it as soon as we're done with the video, but just wanted to kind of show you what it looks like, what it lives like. There's some super cute shoes and tall shoe boxes. Here's my storage for my other shoes down here below. Uh, these pull out. I am completely in love with these. One thing I wish is they were a little taller up because you want to be able to vacuum there, but that's okay. My drawers contain all of my t-shirts, leggings, my uh, running gear, so much running gear, uh, and also, of course, my bras and underwear, things like that. The drawers are just, I'm telling you, they will change your life. I've also got a step stool in here and some other little accessories that really make a big difference and the consistent hangers as well. And if you look at this, this is a pull out belt rack. My husband actually borrows this because it fits better on my side of the closet, but what a great belt and tie option to have. And then when you go up here, um, we've got these lovely linen boxes that hold all kinds of stuff. And that right there is a valet rod. And this is why you need a valet rod in your closet. Uh, pretend I'm going somewhere today. I can stage my outfit and hang it on there. Scott actually uses it also when he's getting ready to leave for work. And I can do everything from scarves to jewelry. Here I've got a jacket paired with a really cute dress that I haven't even worn anywhere yet. But isn't she darling? That came from Stitch Fix. Uh, and here on the packing closet side, I've got all of my ball caps on these hooks. Again, I run or walk almost every day, so it's really important I have a lot of those caps that I wear. And then over here, I've got a couple of magnetic hooks that hold more hats a few more hanging pieces, again, taking advantage of going all the way to the ceiling with the storage. That is the biggest game changer with a system like this. And if you haven't watched my packing closet video, I'll insert a link to that right here so you can go and watch it. But this could use a little bit of a clean out, but it's all of the hodgepodge of things I use when I travel. Packing cubes, neck pillows, uh, I've got uh, travel purses and accessories and pool bags and all of those things, but all of my travel items are corralled in one space. I've got a couple of my Disney bags there, my suitcases, and then up there at the very top, I've got my favorite suitcase that I use the most, which is the Away Larger uh, Carry-On. 
This is probably my favorite part of my closet. It's where I have my accessories, my jewelry, my perfume. Oh, let's fix that little picture. And even practical items like my lint brush are in here because of dog hair. And it's just a fabulous, fabulous space. Some of the things that you saw me point out when I walked you guys around are the importance of bins and things that coordinate. Um, I love in this system that we go all the way to the ceiling with the shelving, but I also love that I've got bins in here that coordinate with one another. Now, you can buy these at the container store. I will actually put links in the description box below to everything that I've used in this closet, but come up with a color palette that you like and stick with that color palette. A lot of the different storage and organizational companies, even Target, Amazon, whatever, you'll find a line that are all similar color or similar texture. Try not to have a hodgepodge of a bunch of different things. Um, the, the boxes that I have on the very top, and I'll insert a picture of those right here, they're not exactly the same as these linen ones, but they do coordinate. And that does tend to just give the whole space a more cohesive feel. The other big thing is to have matching hangers. Consistent hangers make a huge difference in your closet. I use the huggable hangers. Make sure they are actually huggable hangers. I will put a link below to uh, where I get mine, um, but they are by uh, Joy Mangiano. You guys know her if you've seen the movie about her life. She's a great female entrepreneur, um, but they really are my favorite. They're not terribly expensive, the huggable hangers. There are a lot of these that are... Um, like not the actual Huggable Hangers brand. And you will find that the flocking will come off on those, but on these, they do not. I have all mostly consistent hangers, uh, this color for my side of the closet, and then I have black on my husband's awful messy side of the closet. But that's another thing that really goes a long way towards making it look consistent and actually more put together. The other thing that is a game changer is having drawers in your closet. And um, I'll insert kind of a close-up picture, and I'm sure I showed you in the video as well, and I'll, I'll kind of show you guys exactly how these draw drawers work. But People don't think about drawers in a closet, and my goal was to not have to have a dresser in our bedroom at all, and we have achieved that. I have plenty of storage in here. I have everything um, divided out. I know exactly what goes in every drawer, uh, but things like my t-shirts I have folded a certain way, and then of course, as many items as I can, I also have hung up, but drawers in your closet will make a huge difference. If you don't wanna do a whole alpha system, you can do like the drawer units. Those are available. I think that um, Ikea also makes a version of that but drawers help you divide things out and really keep things corralled. Of course, the most important thing in your closet is to make sure that stuff is cleaned out. If you're not wearing it, get rid of it. I also rotate through things seasonally. Like this box right here has right now my like winter pajamas. I just switched this out the other day. My winter pajamas and my really heavy running gear is in here because we should be done with that knock on wood, we should be done with that for the season. And I've switched out, there's a drawer right here in front of me that is for my swimsuits. When it is the winter months, the swimsuit drawer goes in this box right here, and the box with my really heavy winter pajamas and my heavy winter running jackets goes in this drawer here. So although I don't, you know, Atlanta's kind of weird in that we don't have, um, like a lot of times you're wearing spring clothes in winter and winter clothes in spring because you just never know. Um, so we don't have huge temperature extremes, but we do have seasons somewhat. So I do have some clothes that I trade out. Um, I also don't keep my clothes color-coded. I more put them by what I'm currently wearing. And there's a spot right here that I'll show you guys that's right behind me that is really the clothes that I'm currently wearing the most. And then the rest of the clothes are on the other side. Okay, another really important thing for us to talk about is shoes. I'm gonna show you right now where I store my shoes and how I store my shoes. I have all of these racks at the bottom that again are alpha. I absolutely love these because they pull out and I can easily see the shoes that I want. And then the shoes that I wear less frequently are up here in these plastic boxes. Um, this is where I would put like my special occasion shoes. These shoes, for example, I wore literally one time and I don't know when I will ever wear these shoes again. I think they're probably out of style now. I don't know, they're Antonio Milani. I don't even know who that is, but I know it's Italian. 
I love these shoes. Are they just the cutest? I don't know where I'm going to wear them. I don't know. I mean, to something. I think I need another. I think the dress that I bought to wear them with doesn't even exist anymore. Like, I, I no longer have it in my closet. But I love them. So these shoes are a perfect example of just because you don't wear something all the time, that doesn't mean you have to get rid of it. If it loves you, and if it loves you, these shoes might love me. <laughs> If you love it and if it brings you joy, keep it. Just put it in a place where it is well organized. And I love these tall shoe boxes from the container store. These will actually hold two pairs of shoes. Um, I have these, this contains uh, two pairs of heels that I never wear anymore, but you kind of have to have, right? Because when you go to funerals or weddings, you have to have heels like that. So those go up there as well. Um, so that's a great option for shoes that you wear less often. Most of us rotate through about a dozen pairs of different types of shoes and we maybe own three or four dozen types of shoes. So you really want to pare that down to shoes that actually fit, that you actually wear, that are comfortable. And if, if they don't fit any of those criteria and you don't just love them because they're pretty, you probably want to get them out of your closet. All right, so let's talk about what to do when you're purging. What do you do with the stuff? So you have a lot of different options. Of course, you can go to your local Goodwill. You can invite your friends. Maybe you want to do a clothing swap. That's a great way to upcycle some clothes. I have some friends that keep inviting me to one and I keep not going. You guys, I'm so sorry. I've been traveling so much, but I actually love that idea to upcycle clothing so that it doesn't just end up in a landfill because I know a lot of like Goodwill and places are so inundated with clothes that they do end up throwing away quite a bit. And that always feels like a shame. Another great option is something like Poshmark or what I've been doing recently. And again, not sponsored is Thread Up. The reason I like Thread Up is they send me a bag. It's called a clean out bag. It's free. You put all your stuff in there and what they can't sell, they will um, responsibly donate. And I just recently did a clean up bag with them and I got about $100 and I don't have to use it with Thread Up. I was actually able to use it um, just cash. They just put it right into my PayPal account. So that was a really nice benefit. They take handbags, they take accessories, and of course they take clothing and shoes. They are very particular about what they'll sell sell, but the bag is free and the postage on the bag is free. So whatever they can't sell, they will just donate. And you don't have to go through the whole thing with Poshmark where you have to photograph it and upload it and, and go through all of that. So I'll put the link to ThreadUp below if you're interested in that. Um, I also like that I didn't have to spend it on ThreadUp, that I could just have um, cash money, which you know, who doesn't like cash money? Cash money is a good way to go. So is your master closet important? I think it's super important. This is the place where you come at the beginning of every day to kind of greet the world. It's the place where you come at the end of every day to kind of start your wind down process. And I think your master closet should feel like a well-organized and happy space that no matter how large or small it is, you can find what you need and that you open up those doors and you feel good about what you see. So good luck in your own process. If you have any questions about any of the stuff I mentioned today, please put those in the comments below. I hope you like this tour of my master closet. And um, yeah, if you want to see more videos like this, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to the channel. I hope whatever you're doing today, you're finding joy and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.